If you're a pilot trying to get into the FB community, it could be very intimidating and just downright daunting. For example, what drones do I buy? What protocols do I use? And do I even need a goggles? Yes, we've all been through those situations before as beginner pilots. That's where you have companies just like Emacs where they release their Tiny Hawk 3 RTF kit. And you're probably asking, what is RTF? RTF is ready to fly. This is where the company takes care of every aspect, everything from your drone to your radio and even your goggles. All you have to do is open the box, charge your batteries and go fly. And that's what we're gonna do today. So here is the package right here. This is the nice Emacs Tiny Hawk 3 RTF kit. This is what it looks like straight from the box. Pretty nice looking case actually. This nice blue violet color, it's pretty attractive and you have this nice Emacs embossed in the front here. Now this is pretty cool and important because this is actually the case that you'll be using to transport your drone, your goggles and your radio from place to place. So it's a pretty cool setup so far. So let's open this up and see what's in here. You have these nice big thick zippers. Let's just unzip this and take a look at what's inside here. Wow, there's a lot in here. Let's start off with the biggest thing that we see here is this goggles, let's get this out. And it's cool that they have these straps on here so that it's secure. Some of the other kits, you just have a slot which is cut out, but nothing to secure the actual devices. And it's, as you can see, very secure. Here's your remote, and this thing is really nice, really, pretty big. Oh boy, here's your drone right here. Oh man, this is the big boy here. This is the main star. Your drone, we'll put that to the side right here. You have some other knickknacks. <laughs> and here's some other accessories and tools. So let's close this up and take a look what we have here. Put this to the side. Sweet guys, this thing is amazing. Let's start off with this. This thing is probably one of the heaviest things in here. Man, this thing is nice. Here's your goggles. It doesn't seem too big. Sometimes I've seen some goggles, which is pretty huge. These are box style goggles. These are probably one of the more uh, inexpensive design of goggles, but this seems to be very well built and very sturdy, nice strap guys. Oh, there's some other stuff in here. Hmm, but yeah, I see like two little sensors up here and I wonder if those are light sensors so that it can automatically adjust the brightness of the screen. So that is pretty cool if that's the case. So yeah guys, I like the color here. This is very nice neutral colors, very representative of most of the colors in FPV, very dark and just great colors. You have two antennas here. I don't know if this is a diversity receiver, but most likely it is since there's two antennas on here. To the side of here, you have a few buttons here. It looks like A for automatic search. You have your power and your mode button here. You have a slot here and this is for your SD card. So this thing does have a built-in DVR so you can actually record your flights, which is amazing. If you're first starting to fly, that's amazing. You can show your friends, your family, your progress, or in case you lose your drone, you can actually replay your flight and see exactly where your drone maybe landed or crashed. Uh, below here, you have a nice little screw, like a quarter 20 screw. Now we'll talk about that in a few minutes. You have Emacs embossed here, and on the side here, you have your B, C, and R, so your uh, band channel, and then your record button, and here's your video out, so that's pretty cool. Wow, this is, this is amazing, guys. This is exciting. Here's your radio, your controller. Really nice controller, same color as the goggles. And these gimbals feel pretty good. Very light, but very accurate. There's not much play in here. The color's good. There's a little bit of texture on here, so it feels really nice. Um, you have a lanyard strap right here, or a hook for lanyard strap. And then you have your trim buttons, your actual uh, gimbals, which I said feel pretty well. Um, looks like you have a signal and then a battery light here. You have these switches here. These are three position switches. And then you have two position switches here. And this thing here is made to fit around your hands. So it has really good ergonomics on here. Uh, you have this battery port and it takes one battery, uh, 18650 battery. And that's cool that it's already included in here. So down here you have two ports. Looks like one maybe for a trainer port and one down here, which is a micro USB again. And that's used for charging and also interfacing with your computer so you can use this with your simulators. Why is that important guys? Sometimes if the weather is bad outside, you can't fly, you can practice your sim on your computer. 
And most importantly, before you fly any of these drones, if you're a first time pilot, it's good to get some stick time on the computer, get to know the controls, get a feel for the controls, and therefore protecting your investment, which is your drone. You don't want to go on your first flight, crash your drone, or forget how to use it, and then your drone flies away. And these things are all possible, guys. This controller is awesome, and I'm really impressed with the gimbals. Now, in their previous RTF kits, they had a different controller with these ball joint gimbals, and those weren't precise. And ball joints meaning like this, there's no really precision in there, it's more like a, a game controller. These are not that desired in the FPV world. That's where you have these really nice two axis, you know, so that's pretty awesome guys. Let's get to the star of the shore here. This is the Tiny Hawk 3. All right, so let's take a look at this. You have some foam here, remove that. That's not a big deal. And here's your drone. It's pretty tiny guys. Um, my first time using one of these drones. And this is pretty standard when you get an RTF kit. It's usually a tiny whoop. And it's called a whoop because of these guards around the propellers. Um, usually you'll have some bumpers on here, some foam padding, but this is pretty nice. This will do the job. And this is the third iteration of this drone. And Emacs have really stressed that they improve the rigidity and the durability of this drone. Looking around here for the first time, looks pretty good. The white color is pretty awesome with these amber or orange propellers, four blade propellers, pretty awesome. The thing I noticed here as well is this little canopy with this camera. And the good thing is that you have an adjustable camera on here. Why is that important? Some drones do come with fixed angle. The best thing about adjustable cameras is that you can adjust the tilt and therefore adjust your flying style. With a camera like this, pretty straightforward, you can fly pretty slow as a new pilot and fly around and it's pretty good. Good for indoors and that's pretty awesome. As your talent and experience has progressed or is progressed, then you can increase the tilt of this camera and therefore now to fly forward, you have to tilt down this drone even more and then you'll be flying even faster. And that's great for outdoors. At first, it's good to try it at level or low angle and we will do that today. We will fly this at a lower angle indoors and see how it behaves. You have your, looks like your VTX antenna and VTX is the visual transmission system. This is your antenna, that's pretty cool. So this will transmit the image from the camera to your goggles down here. Pretty good. Talking about the VTX, the VTX power on this is adjustable with a max power of 200 milliwatts. 200 milliwatts is pretty impressive. It can get you to around maybe two to 300 meters range, which is pretty awesome for a first time drone. This has a built-in receiver. So this does have an SPI receiver D8 or D16, and that's good for in case you wanna use another transmitter in the future, then most transmitters do have that protocol so you can transmit and communicate from your radio to this drone. So that's a good thing about this drone. Now under here, we have a battery that's already included with this drone. This is a 1S battery, and I think this is a 450 milliamp hour, which it is, and that's good. So the higher the number here, the more power you have or reserve capacity, and then you can either fly faster or fly for a longer period of time with more capacity. And it's cool that it comes with the drone. Besides that, you have these rubber bands to hold the drone down, and then you have your leads here. Looks like a pH 2.0, and there's a nice capacity on here, so that's good for like surges or you know reducing interference with the drone. Now the cool thing about this drone as well, because there is a micro USB, you can go into Betaflight. That's the software or the firmware uh, that controls everything on here. And you can probably change some parameters in the future. I really wouldn't recommend you do that right now, but it is there. Another cool thing is that I see that these have plug type motor wires. So in case one of these motors were to fail, uh, you can just order a new motor, unplug it, install the new motor and then just replug it. So there's no soldering required when it comes to repairing this drone if it does get damaged in the future. All right, let's take a look at some of the accessories you have, which is pretty cool. Uh, you have a charger, so that's awesome. That takes the risk out of you charging it. I don't know how to charge it. We'll talk about that later as well. You have some mounts here for something, a clip. You have a, a little zip plug bag with a, wow, that's a tiny screwdriver and some other rubber bands for your battery. And then here's your micro USB to USB-A cable to either charge this or to connect it to the computer. So that's pretty awesome. I wish it was longer, but a lot of people have these cords laying around, but it's pretty cool that they actually included it into the kit here. 
So you can charge two batteries at one time, one S, one S, and then you have a switch here, whether you wanna do a LiPo or high voltage. Now, we'll talk about it a little later in, other, in, the, in another video, but pretty much uh, this is a HV or high voltage battery, 3.8 volts, and then, so when you're charging this, make sure it's at HV for now, and we do have it switched here. So here's one of the most impressive things about this drone is these goggles. Now these are, as I said, box style goggles. These just go over your face. So the majority of FPV goggles are not compatible with glasses. And I don't know if this one is with mine. It looks, <laughs> it looks very narrow. So here's my glasses right here. And let's see if this thing fits. It does not. And there's no surprise there but there is some nice foam on this so that will give you a good seal. For me, I'm nearsighted so I can see things pretty well near. So in the past, I've used some other box goggles and I had no issues with it seeing the, the distance here or the, the image on the screen, uh, but these are adjustable. So if you do have a mild prescription or maybe you can see kind of okay without your glasses, these things do come out. And you have three positions as you can see here, one, two, and three. And that's good. So in my case, I will be flying this without my glasses. You have, as I said, two antennas with diversity. Once you power this on, the image will show on here and you can see whatever this camera sees in the drone. The cool thing about this is you can easily remove this. And there you go, here's your screen. You can use this as a monitor. That's, I mean, this is so impressive that they thought about this. Some other uh, goggles have this feature as well but this is really small and compact. You can see how thin this is. So that's pretty cool. And that's the reason why you have a mount here. Why you can mount this to a tripod, you can mount this to anything if you want to, or give this to one of your friends while you're flying and have them see what you're looking at while you're flying. Now, the cool thing about this right here is that you have these mounts. That's what these are for. And you can just pull this up, slide this mount in here, and it just clicks in there. So it's pretty cool, pretty secure. And then all you have to do is just screw this to your monitor. And just like any kind of GoPro mount, you just slide this in here. And this is another reason why this color scheme is so awesome because these things are interchangeable and it looks like this was made and designed to be together. Wow, bravo guys, bravo. This is, this is really impressive guys, even for an experienced uh, pilot. Now, this reminds me of some of the early DJI controllers where you have a screen attached on here. This gives me that vibes completely. Now, this is a pretty amazing feature for numerous reasons, as I said before. If you've outgrown these goggles, then you can have your friends or your family look at this, and this will also record as well, so it's amazing. But this is also important because there's a lot of people who want to be involved with FPV, and they might be a little bit visually impaired and they can't use the goggles. This is a really great alternative for that or a solution for that, guys. If this is what I think it is, if this is a light sensor, then it makes sense why these two sensors are right here. I don't know yet, but I think that's why this is here. I haven't seen anyone talk about it. And hence the reason why you can use this outdoors and this will adjust. Now, I don't know how bright this screen gets. You know, uh, it gets pretty bright, especially on a nice sunny day. But we will be trying this out in the future video, guys. So if you want to see that, please subscribe. You'll be notified whenever I do drop that video. So yeah, guys, this is the RTF kit. If you're trying to get into the FPV hobby, this is a really good candidate for you guys. Not only did they think about what drone to consider, they also gave you a controller and also a goggle. A really impressive uh, controller so far at that. So yeah guys, what do you think about the Tiny Hawk 3 RTF kit? Are you impressed with it? If you have any questions about this, leave them down below. I will be happy to answer those. And while you're there, please consider subscribing to the channel. Therefore, you'll be notified whenever I do drop a new video because right after this, I'll be making a specs video and a setup and first flight video. So you don't want to miss those. And if you have any questions, you definitely want to see the specs video to see what all these numbers mean, guys. So anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace!